In the previous section, 5.4, we learned about this really cool function, e to the x, and how it's its own derivative, which is just, it's really, it should still be blowing your mind. You, should, you still shouldn't be able to believe that. Um, and if it's its own derivative, then obviously it's its own antiderivative. Uh, before that, we learned about the natural log of x and how its derivative is 1 over x, and that was really motivated, actually, by our desire to know what would be the antiderivative of 1 over x. Uh, we, we talked about at the beginning of that section that uh, we could take the antiderivative of, of 1 over x squared, 1 over the square root of x, 1 over anything but x, and, and that, so that led us to the natural log of x. Um, so we know all about these things, but um, e to the x is something called an exponential function. And the base doesn't have to be e. It could be 3. It could be 4. Uh, it could be, for instance, 2 y equals 2 to the x. So this exponential function, um, and, and exponential functions are uh, something of a prerequisite, but uh, really quickly, if we raise 2 to the x, then every time we we uh, go to the next x value, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, well, what are we doing? Take 2 to the first, that's 2, 2 to the second, that's fourth, 2 to the uh, third, that's 8, Everything, it just keeps doubling, okay? So uh, that's kind of like um, a population of, uh, of of elk or or people or uh, really any population, it it seems to follow a trend of over a certain um, amount of time, uh, the population will double. So after so many years, the the elk population will double, and it'll double again. It'll double again. That's what we call the doubling time. Um, so that's the kind of function an exponential function is. This doubles every x value. Um, this goes up by a factor of e every x value. Um, another function y equals one half x. Well, this one wouldn't double; it would be cut in half every time you go up x. Um, so that's a, just a little taste of, of exponential functions. You may remember, uh, like two to the x would be it's doubling; one half to the x would be it's being cut in half every time. This might be uh, bacterial growth. This may be uh, half-life decay. So um, just a, a quick reminder about exponential functions, how there's more of them out there than just e to the x. And so the natural question would be then, what are their derivatives? Um, what would be the derivative of a to the x? What would be the derivative of, of 2 to the x or 3 to the x or whatever, or 1 half to the x? Um, well, I'm just going to list them out now. I'm, I'm going to reveal uh, the whole thing to you. Uh, and I hope you stick around afterwards to see, um, like, a proof. Okay, so uh, the derivative of a to the x is the natural log of a times a to the x. So a to the x makes it up an appearance in its own derivative, and you just take it and multiply by whatever the value of the natural log of a is. Um, the derivative of log base a of x, which these two are, are inverse functions, just like e to the x and natural log of x are inverse functions, um, this derivative would be 1 over the natural log of a, and down here with the natural log of a is x. Okay, and <clears throat> as, you know, a to the x kind of has similar, the derivative of a to the x has a similar look to the derivative of e to the x, you know, it makes its own appearance in its, in its own derivative. Um, we see the log base a of x has a 1 over x there, right? Just like the natural log of x has 1 over x. Uh, we just are, again, multiplying by the natural log of a here in the denominator. Um, and the antiderivative of a to the x dx would just be 1 over the natural log of a times a to the x plus c. So if that's all you want to get out of this video, that uh, these exist, that's pretty much what we're going to do. I mean, we're just going to apply these. Um, I'm going to have you take derivatives and antiderivatives, and that's going to be pretty much the extent of it. Um, but uh, I would hope that you would take a moment and, and just have this proven to you, that the derivative of a to the x is natural log of a times a to the x, and likewise for log base a of x. It'll take maybe two, three minutes. Uh, so say we want to take the derivative of a to the x. Let's rewrite this as the derivative of e to 
x time or say that let's let's put a step in between there uh, e to the natural log remember when we take e to the natural log there's like this cancellation effect since they are inverse functions when we take e to the natural log of something it just winds up canceling and being this thing so that thing should be a to the x so that it equals a to the x um, so now we'll use the properties of logarithms to rewrite this we're going to take the derivative of e to the, now we're going to bring this exponent down in front, that's x times the natural log of a, okay, and now we can take the derivative. The derivative of e to the something is e to that something uh, times the derivative of this thing. Well this thing, what you have to realize is the natural log of a is a constant. The natural log is a function that when you plug numbers into it, it tells you what the natural log of that function is. Specifically, a, just a quick uh, flashback into uh, logarithmic functions. The natural log of a, the natural log of a is equal to some number. This number, if you take e to this number, you get a, right? That's what the natural log of a is. It's just that exponent. That's all this is. It's a number. So the derivative of a number times x is just that number. It's just the natural log of a. Um, so there we have it, a simple derivative. The derivative of a constant times x is that constant. Here, we'll rewrite e to the x natural log of a. Well, let's just go back. We took this, this here, is uh, is the same as this, right? It's obviously, at least this part of the expression is the same as this thing. And we only got this by rewriting this. Uh, the e to the natural log of a to the x, and that was just another way to write a to the x. So this is equal to a to the x. So um, we have the natural log of a right here times this thing, which is equivalent to a to the x. So natural log of a times a to the x. So there's your proof that uh, that's the derivative. And now let's do the same for this guy right here and we'll be done. And then in the sample problems video, we'll just uh, basically use the chain rule on a bunch of these things and, and maybe do some u substitution for integrals like this. So um, we want to take the derivative of this. So let's rewrite this this way. So in order to just accept that, that we can do that, uh, there's this thing called the change of base formula, and it's one of those things about logarithms that we have talked about in times past, so you might want to go back and be refreshed on that. But now what we have is the derivative of 1 over the natural log of a uh, times the natural log of x. I separate it that way because um, 1 over the natural log of a is going to be a constant, just like we talked about the natural log of a is a constant. Um, and so the derivative of this is going to be this constant, 1 over the natural log of a times the derivative of this thing. So the derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x. So we can just put these together. we got natural log of a times x here in the denominator, and that's it. That is the derivative, just like I said it was. Um, so there's a couple of proofs of, of these two, and uh, I just I appreciated seeing those things as a student, and I thought I'd share those with you. And uh, in the sample problems video, we will do some sample problems. All right, so see you there.